to listen to your messages and to change your personal attitude. Mobile Industry Review. The future of voicemail. My name is Sean Barber. I'm Director of Product Management uh, with Ascision. Ascision is the uh, mobile data services company. Is it fair to say you're a voicemail guy? I am a voicemail guy. As much as I dislike the term voicemail, um, we, we like to say voice messaging in uh -huh. today's market. Well, and, no, uh, yeah, it's an interesting one because we see, I think we find that voicemail uh, has this stigma attached to it in the industry for the past few years. Um, we've got a lot of operators that uh, were sold some legacy equipment. Uh, 40 racks in large data centers and every time they want to implement a new feature, a new piece of technology, certainly if it's IP based, um, they've got to invest in new infrastructure. And uh, here recently that's become quite problematic for a lot of operators. What I found working with a lot of operators globally um, is that they really have a tough time quantifying what the revenue model is for voicemail. So we talk about call completion in general, um, but a lot of operators don't know what that means. They don't have the statistics to determine hey, how many call returns does my voicemail system generate or how many message deposits does my voicemail system generate and what does that do to future call completion rates. Um, you see operators that have dabbled in new services like maybe voice SMS where you use SMS as a delivery mechanism so that it's a pushed message um, and it's non-intrusive. Um, but, the, but the stickiness, it, 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 it's almost as if it's done behind the scenes and it's not um, marketed and it's not positioned with the consumer um, and therefore a lot of consumers they don't know about this breadth of technology and feature set that they have because they've got these real big clunky twoies where you have to press three to go here and press nine to go here and press six to go here and you're five levels down nobody wants to stay on the phone for five minutes and figure out what their mailbox you know what their voice mailbox is capable of providing um, so I think that's been you know problematic um, for the industry and, and uh, again we've been working on some different things that, that allow consumers to have more direct access to some of these features and, and uh, build the services to reflect those directly. Yeah, we uh, we just launched a campaign called "Plugging the, uh, the the Billion Dollar Revenue League" because if if you look at what the call completion rates are, um, they're really not that impressive when you look at voicemail, right? So you've got about on global average about seventy percent of calls are successful. You've got about thirty percent that are unsuccessful for various number of reasons, um, and of those thirty percent, you have a, a percentage that actually makes it to voicemail, um, and we estimate that to be about 30% that actually gets to voicemail. So already you can see how you're diluted. Now once you're in voicemail, um, you've got probably 60% of those calls actually result in what we call a slam down, right? Where the voicemail starts playing and then you just say, I don't feel like leaving a message and you slam the phone down. So if you think about it, if, if voicemail is a key call completion revenue generating event for an operator, if you follow the pie of the percentage that I just outlined, it's really not a whole lot. Um, operators are leaving a lot of money on the table with regard to how they can ensure call completion. And that's where Ascision's developed the call completion suite because we look at a range of products um, within the voice messaging portfolio that will enable an operator to capture these revenue generating events in the forms of call completion. Unified communications is a buzzword that's been around now for 10 years uh, and we've never really seen it take off. Interestingly enough, we've seen it come back. Um, it used to mean fax, voicemail, email in the same mailbox. Now it means I want all of my messages in a single location. I want all my personalization settings there as well. I want my social communities. I want everything in the same place with a global address book so that I can look at you know, my messaging experience in a single location. That technology is there, it's easy to do. Um, you know, we, we use open standards-based protocols for mail stores and for delivery, um, for SMS, for MMS, um, any kind of, you know, call signaling on a network, um, and then, you know, make the messages available in a single location. Um, the number of operators that don't employ webmail interfaces for voicemail retrieval is amazing to me because it's such a simple thing to do. Um, it's, it's open APIs. You can build your own interface, 
you know, you can brand it. You can engage it in any other services that you want. You can do self-care. Um, you could take a lot of that experience I spoke about earlier that's managed via the TUI and simplify it in a web-based environment and put the subscriber in control of the service. Um, that's huge because then they're going to they're gonna explore. How many times have you been on the Internet, right, and you start clicking around on web pages and you're looking at some of the, uh, the, 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 you know, the variations that you have, the options that you have, whereas you're not going to stay on the phone for 10 minutes and use all your prepaid minutes or postpaid minutes while you try to navigate through a TUI to figure out that you can do a reminder service. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. Um, so those interfaces are there, and I encourage the operators to look to employ them straight away because that's where people get interested in the flexibility of, of what a voice messaging service can actually provide. Absolutely. It was, it was uh, earth shattering from a market perspective because what they did is they changed the consumer behavior of voicemail. Now, the exclusivity agreements with the operators um, left things a little bit, uh, you know, to be determined. Um, and a lot of operators, if you go back to the point about call completion, and there are operators out there that can tell you how much money they make from, you know, voicemail retrievals. Um, well, the visual voicemail experience actually removes that, right? Because you're now using a visual interface to retrieve your messages. But, you know, we've seen statistics that show that because of visual voicemail enablement, that subscribers are more inclined to use a voicemail service because they know that their message is going to be more immediately retrieved. Um, so you've got a lot of operators out there that are looking at, well, do I do it or do I not do it? And then how do I do it? Do I do it on a champion device or do I do it on multiple devices? Um, is it a downloadable application or is it pre-baked on the handset? So that's where we are in the market. We see a lot of interest right now. We just, not too many folks have actually taken that leap of faith yet, but we think it's coming. Because operators now have said, oh, voice, 80% of our revenues. Excellent. Let's go focus on that other 20% and let's look at data. And they've done that, data and data and data and data. And now their voice ARP views are going like this, they're declining, and they're coming back and saying, well, hang on a minute, this is my bread and butter. How do I get my voice revenues back to where they were, at least stabilize? I can't have them declining because this is what's empowering my network. And on the flip side, they're looking at their mobile broadband consumption and they're saying, whoa, hang on, that's being used you know, at a much more aggressive rate than I can actually pay for it. Uh, and invest in it, and now I've got to address that problem. So hey, let's go back to the basics, let's go back to voice. And I think this is the opportunity to, to start to reshape the voice messaging landscape. Voicemail is, again, people have called it a commodity, um, but it's been around for a long time, and it continues to be. We don't see a lot of operators decommissioning voicemail. They may choose a different service model, but they're not decommissioning it. Flip side is, they're also saying, well hang on a minute, I don't want to invest again unless you can give me a good enough reason uh, to invest in this product because it's going to be future proof, right? It's IP based. It goes in my IMS network. Okay, that's a great story. It's on next gen architecture with blades. Okay, great. But what's going to keep me from having to reinvest in five years? Um, so they're just now at the point where they realize that they can look at voice messaging instead of voicemail. Um, there's a lot of movers and shakers out there with technologies that are putting a dent um, in, in, in kind of their listening uh, ears. Um, you don't see too many that have uh, taken the leap of faith. Visual voicemail is probably the first. Um, we see a lot of operators now that are emulating the iPhone experience on champion devices um, and we're involved in quite a bit of deployments of those. Um, voice to text is something we keep hearing a lot of talk about. We don't see too many that have actually taken the leap of faith. Um, there's still uh, a lot of, uh, you know, how do we make this work from a pricing perspective? Is it subscription based or do we give it to the, to the consumer? But we're seeing them dabble. They're interested. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ewan. Mobile Industry Review. The future of voicemail.